Well, friends, good morning again, and I'll greet you in the name of Jesus. I pray that we're going to have a fruitful time this morning. I want to carry on from, in a sense, from where I left off last week. I dealt with Romans chapter 6, and I went through up to verse 14. Now I want to go from chapter 6, from verse 15 through to 23, and I want to talk under the title of Slaves to Righteousness. Probably best to read it first, so let me do that. So it's Romans six fifteen to 23. What then? What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey, whether you are a slave to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that though you used to be a slave to sin, you've come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, just to there. So, slaves to righteousness. I ended last week by reminding us that we're under grace and we're not under law. Verse 16 today speaks of the fact that when we sin, we are slaves to sin. And when we obey God, we are slaves to righteousness. Which one do we obey? The early Christians obeyed Paul's teachings, and that's verses 17 and 18. The early Christians obeyed Paul's teachings but became slaves of the teachings of Paul, but they were not free from God. We are either slaves to righteousness or are slaves to sin, one or the other. We cannot be a servant of two masters, that's verse 20. Here Paul reminds us, or asks us the question, which one are we? Are we slaves to sin or to righteousness? Which one is master of my life, your life? We can choose which master we want to serve because that's our Christian freedom, if you like. So let's choose the master giving the best reward. That makes a lot of sense, I'm sure you'll agree. Let's choose the master who gives us the best reward. Verse 21 continues, We all of us misuse our freedom uh, from time to time. But verse 22 picks up the fact that there's a great advantage to being a slave of God. First, it leads to holiness, and without holiness, no one will see God. And that's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, if you're wondering. And secondly, being a slave of God leads to eternal life. And Paul picks that up in the next verse. We work to earn wages. When we sin, we earn sin's wages, in inverted commas. But eternal life, or salvation, if you like, is not something we earn by our work or our effort. Eternal life is is a gift from God, a free gift. It's a gift of grace, and it's given to us in Jesus Christ with his blood. This is an amazing thought, my friends, probably the fundamental thought of Christian freedom, if you like. Paul sums all this up beautifully in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, when he says, It is by grace that we have been saved through faith, not by anything we have done, but by what 
God has done. It's a, it's a gift from God. And I want to say to you, Ephesians 2 verse 8, from my perspective, as a Methodist, this is one of the fundamental scripture passages for Methodist theology. Ephesians 2 verse 8, it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, not by anything you have done, but by what Christ has done. I want to just encourage you, my friends, to to just reflect a little on what I've said this morning. Paul is extremely intricate in terms of his his writings and his theology. One really has to work a little carefully with it. And I want to encourage you just to maybe listen again to what I've been saying this morning. But this is just such marvelous good news. All summed up in that one verse from Ephesians. It is by grace that we have been saved through faith. We are either slaves to righteousness or we slaves to sin. What is it? God's grace in Jesus Christ sets us free from the shackles of our sinfulness. That's the best news I can give you today and every other day. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the reality that you love us unconditionally. Lord, we battle to understand unconditional love because we always believe that that somehow we've got to earn your love and forgiveness. And all the time you're telling us to look at the empty cross and be reminded that it's not what we do, it's what you've done that sets us free. And so go with us into our day, O God, and we just thank you for the reminder of your grace and your love for us that doesn't keep score. Bless us through this day, O God, as we give it all to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful day, my friends, and please be blessed. 